I've got a really nice crazy looking infinite product to show everyone today. And we're gonna tackle this by proving a really powerful tool and then using that tool to do this essentially in one step. So our final goal is to find the product as n goes from zero to infinity of two over one plus the two to the nth root of pi. And we're gonna use this, like I said, tool that we'll develop. And that is the product as n goes from one to infinity or zero to infinity of two over one plus x to the power of one over two to the n. That's two times natural log of x over x squared minus one. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's set f sub capital N of x equal to this kind of partial product. It's not quite the entire partial product of this thing over here, but it's kind of enough of it to get a feel for what's going on. So this is gonna be the product as n goes from zero up to n of one over one plus x to the one over two to the n. So like I said, it's not the whole thing, it's missing that two, but we'll take care of that two when we get to it. Okay, so now let's look at a couple of values of this. So f sub zero of x, so that's gonna be the product as n goes from zero to zero of one over one plus x to the one. So that's gonna be one over one plus x. Okay, but now let's notice that our final thing has an x squared minus one in the denominator. So that kind of motivates us to turn this formula into something involving x squared minus one or one minus x squared. And we can do that by multiplying both sides of this by one over one minus x. So that gives us f zero of x over one minus x equals one over one minus x squared. So that's like molding this into the format that we need over here. Okay, so now let's look at f sub one of x and notice that that will be one over one plus x times one plus x to the half. So we see that because we have the zeroth term and the first term. But notice that we get this cascading operation if we multiply by one minus x to the half, that actually brings us all the way down to this one minus x squared in the denominator. So just to like be really careful about that, notice if we were to divide this by one minus x to the half, that's the same thing as multiplying over here by one minus x to the half, then like I said, we've got this cascading action. So these two multiply together to give us one minus x, and then these two multiply together to give us one minus x squared. So that means we can write down f one of x over one minus x to the half is the same thing as one over one minus x squared. The same thing as we had before. Okay, now let's look at one more. So we've got f two of x, that's gonna be equal to one over one plus x, one plus x to the half, one plus x to the quarter, just taking our product for n equals zero, one, and two. But again, multiplying by something in the denominator will have this same cascading effect. So if we now multiply by one minus x to the quarter in the denominator, so one minus x to the quarter, we see that these two will multiply together to be one minus x to the half. And then we're left with essentially the same cascade that we had over here. So in other words, we have f sub two of x over one minus x to the quarter equals one over one minus x squared. Okay, so that's pretty nice, I think. So I think maybe in general, and we don't really need to prove this, I think this is pretty clear. You could do this by induction if you wanted to. We have something like f sub n of x over one minus x to the one over two to the capital N is one over one minus x squared. So that's what we have observed right here. Okay, so now let's take that, and then we're actually just a couple steps away from doing this. Okay, so on the last board, we defined these functions f sub n of x to be 
a portion of our partial product, and we showed they had this nice closed form. Now we're ready to finish off the proof of this tool down here. So let's notice our product as n goes from zero to infinity of two over one plus x to the one over two to the n, which is the left-hand side of this, is in fact equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of two to the n plus one times f sub n of x. You might say, well, why is it two to the n plus one and not two to the n? That's because here we're multiplying n plus one terms because we are starting at zero. Okay, so now we're going to factor one of these twos out and then replace our f sub n with that thing up there, which we developed on the last board. So this is going to give us two and then the limit as capital N goes to infinity of, we have two to the n times one minus x to the one over two to the n all over one minus x squared. But actually while we're at it, let's bring this one minus x squared out as well. Okay, and now we're gonna do a quick change of variables on this limit. So we're gonna set y equal to one over two to the n power. So let's notice as n goes to infinity, y will go to zero from above. So that leaves us with two over one minus x squared. And then we have the limit as y goes to zero from above of, this is gonna be one minus x to the y all over y. Okay, then from here what I'll do is I'll multiply this by minus one and multiply this by minus one, but I'll do that in order just to change the order of subtraction. So that leaves me with x squared minus one out here. And now we can approach this a couple of different ways. We could use L'Hopital's rule to quickly get to this result here using the fact that the derivative with respect to y of x to the y is gonna be something like x to the y times the natural log of x. But I in fact looked at a limit like this in a previous video where we do it a couple of different ways. So that'll be linked at the end of this video. But needless to say, this stuff that I'm underlined in yellow actually turns out to be the natural log of x, which means here we get two times the natural log of x over x squared minus one as desired. But now let's notice that our goal product is really just a special case of this product where we've set x equal to pi. So that tells us we immediately know the value of our goal product. And that's gonna be two times the natural log of pi over pi squared minus one. So there's our final value. And like I said, if you like this video, I've got a video where I derive this kind of value for the natural log via a limit. That should be on the screen right now if you wanna check that out. And that's a good place to stop.